Hello and welcome to this Dome Width Slider Mega Review. I thought I'd mix it up a little bit and do something less conventional for this week. I hope you enjoy it. Dome Width Slider keyboards are essentially a posh, augmented version of rubber dome keyboards, and they range in quality from pretty much the same as normal rubber domes to excellent. This difference is in part because their construction differs widely as well. Many are a simple dome with slide over membrane, but some have a much more complex operation, such as conductive dome with slider over PCB, or even conductive slider with buckling rubber sleeve over single membrane. So I collected a whole bunch of dome with slider keyboards to do very short mini reviews on, not so much about the keyboards, but just a quick blurb about what the switches feel and sound like, and how they compare against each other and other rubber domes. I also have some pure rubber dome keyboards at the end of the video for comparison. These boards tend to be relatively highly rated by the community. Now what I'll do is I'm going to rate them out of 10 on a comparative scale and I'll stick bog standard rubber domes like the ones you'd find on the Dell or HP in your office at 2 out of 10 and the best one among these as 10 out of 10. I've also got a lot of props standing by to show you how some of the more complex and complicated switches work by the way. And as you can see we've got a lot of keyboards to go through so let's get to it. Let's kick off with the dirtiest of the lot. I know this one is very dirty, so it's probably not very representative, but the thing I wanted to stress is how mushy these are. Alps Dome with Slider is a standard Dome with Slider setup with very small sliders like this. They're Alps compatible. And they also have a metal backplane riveted to the barrel plate, much like a Model M. I really don't like these, let's say 2 out of 10. Although, like I said, it could be due to the poor condition. The best thing for sure about this keyboard is surely the genuine Alps made die sublimed PBT keycaps, which are Alps mount. I'm going to ditch this board as soon as I end this video, but the caps are definitely keepers. This one is also dome with slider over membrane with a metal back panel, but it's not mushy. It does feel quite rattly, but it's fairly snappy and tactile and really not bad. The sliders have a strong tendency to stick to the keycaps and you can pull these straight out of the barrel plate. Not really sure what the point of a dome with slider design is in this case, but hey, it works I guess. This board is actually brand new by the way, which is good because it appears to use the exact same keycaps as my beloved KB101A, which is actually the keyboard that's here. So with this I have a brand new pristine set of replacements if I need them. All in all, not bad at all. 7 out of 10. By far and away the most common, I find more NMB dome with slider keyboards at the recycling center than all of the others in this video combined. They consist of these discrete rubber domes, which come in several colors by the way. Here's a box full of them. And they're stuck to the top membrane using this sticky stuff. And they have this funky looking slider sitting on top of it, a little bit like essentially like like that there you go that's a bit how it works they're pretty decent in fact not as quiet as their name might suggest but they don't feel very mushy and they're fairly stable the tactility is pretty snappy and not bad at all overall a good switch 7 out of 10 there are also other Dell Quiet keys made by other manufacturers, including this conductive rubber dome design, but they're not as good. They feel very average. There's even an 8101 model of it, but again, nothing special at all. They feel very much like normal rubber domes to me. Not that different. So if you want a good one, look for the NMB made ones with FCC starting with AQ6, and that should be one of the ones I showed earlier. Tulip dome with slider. These sound a bit hollow and fairly loud, but they're actually quite good, very snappy and satisfying. They got these funky, chunky black sliders on them, which are quite massive and Alps compatible. The board itself is quite well built, by the way, and it's got double shot Alps compatible keycaps with these one unit modifier keys that you can see here, which are a nice find by themselves. The stabilizers are a bit weird though, and I don't like them. Overall, 7.5 out of 10. Next up, Seijin Futaba Mount Domes. These are super mushy. Ugh, almost not tactile at all, and I really don't like these. They strongly remind me of those awful Keytronic foam and foil switches I showed a little while ago. Absolute bleh. 
They look just like Futaba clicky switches, by the way. So if you're after them, beware you don't actually buy one of these because they're shit. I'd rather type on a HP, to be honest. One out of ten. I don't know why. I used to never find these Matsushita boards. I'd never even heard of that before. And now I see them much more regularly. Strange. Anyway, these are very mushy and barely tactile at all. It's like sticking your hands in silly putty. Blech, bleh. The sliders come in various shades of sickly green, even on the same keyboards. And they just look a bit funky, but they are Alps compatible. Overall, they're very comparable as the ones before. One out of ten. Look at that, it's my old SunType 5C again. I actually did a whole review on one of these. Great board and very good looking. Very well built. I don't know yet how to disassemble these, so I don't know the actual workings of Fujitsu dome with sliders. But later sunboards with these switches were the standard dome with slider over membrane setup. They're somewhat spongy, but nice and tactile and not rattly at all. They feel pretty solid. Let's say 7 out of 10. Next, the notorious Fujitsu Peerless. This is a more modern version of the FKB 4700 I reviewed ages ago. This one's much lighter and has Windows keys. The switches are essentially a slider with a spring, in a sock, in a barrel plate, over domes, over a membrane. The switches feel a little bit like stiffer, scratchier buckling springs, and they make a sound unlike any other switch I've heard before. I think officially they're clicky, but if these are clicky, then I'm Cleopatra. They're not bad at all, but the stabilizers on the large keys are fucking horrible. If you don't count the awful stabs, I'd rate this maybe 6 out of 10 if I'm generous. Keytronic done with slider, Wee! This is some kind of voice software keyboard. It's got a big speaker here with volume control and uh, mic and headset jacks and even a mouse port below the keyboard. It also holds the record for weirdest plug I've ever seen in my life. The switches themselves are fairly stiff and mushy but fairly tactile and still better than normal domes. Let's say 4 out of 10. Probably the most complicated design on this list, Mitsumi hybrid switches aren't actually rubber domes, but I put them on anyway because they're quite similar. They use sliders with conductive rubber feet to bridge gaps across a single membrane, a little bit like a jumper like this. If you get these in good condition, they feel pretty decent. But they get really spongy for some reason on dirty ones, I don't know why. Normally they feel nice and snappy and not spongy at all though, thanks to the buckling rubber sleeve. They got a really nice key feel actually, let's say 8 out of 10. This is the linear version, they essentially are the same as the previous one, except they use a coil spring rather than buckling rubber sleeves. Which makes them unique, because that makes them the only linear switch on this list, so I won't even rank them because there's no point. They use a PCB as a backing rather than a single membrane, like the tactile variant, by the way, which, together with the absence of domes, explains why they're not mushy in the slightest. They feel quite light and delicate, and as far as linears go, they're actually really nice. Delicate and very smooth, better than Cherry MX Black, in my opinion. BTC Dome with Slider. Yep, it's this one again. I love these BTC domes with slider. They're very smooth and snappy, lovely tactility. They're possibly the loudest on this list. But they're excellent as far as rubber domes go, 9 out of 10. They use a PCB instead of a membrane, and then they have these conductive rubber dome strips above which sits the sliders. Also, the sliders are MX compatible, so you can stick your favorite cherry or artisan keycaps on them. And the boards these come on are usually very well built and have a metal back panel. Monterey Dome with Slider. The sliders on these are almost exactly the same as on the BTC, but Alps mount, and they don't use a PCB. They feel just as snappy, but a little bit more mushy, and they rattle a lot here. Let me show you what happens when you shake the board a little bit. You can actually hear everything rattling around. Still a very good key feel, though, up there with the best of them. 8 out of 10. Focus Dome with Slider. The entire third generation of Focus boards have these, so all of the models that end in 200. They're quite complicated in construction. You can even take the whole unit out like this. 
They feel very cheap though, and again, they rattle quite a lot. It's not quite as bad as on the Monterey, but it's quite noticeable. Let's call it a 6 out of 10. Now for the conventional rubber dome boards, some people say Keytronic rubber is supposedly really good, but all the models I've found, including these two, feel very average, barely better than normal domes. It's, it's a bit rattly, maybe slightly more snappy. No, they're quite mushy though, not really anything special. This Olivetti ANK27 is much better though, very snappy for a pure rubber dome board. Yeah, not bad at all. I'd rank this uh, 7 out of 10. That's it for this review. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you for watching, and see you again next week.